far in listen only mode. Good day to everyone joining us and welcome to today's Excellence webinar, Scale Up Considerations from Formulation Development to Commercialization. My name is Donna Papacosta and I'll be your host for today. This seminar will run for about 45 minutes including a Q&A session toward the end. This webinar is designed to be interactive, so please feel free to type in questions and comments throughout the presentation by using the questions function on the panel on the right-hand side of your screen. If we cannot answer your question during the allotted time period, we will send you a direct reply after the live webinar. At this time, all participants are in listen-only mode. The event will be recorded and made available for future download from the scientific seminar page on the Excellence website. The presentation slides will advance automatically. If you need technical assistance, please contact GoToWebinar at the numbers displayed. In the U.S., that's 800-263-6317 or 1-805-617-7000. Now we'd like to begin the formal presentation. Excellience is a premier provider of formulation development and manufacturing solutions with a solid reputation for accelerating early phase small molecule development. Our formulation development scientists have considerable experience overcoming challenges associated with physical and chemical properties of drug substance or limited quantities of active pharmaceutical ingredient, API, in a manner that results in compounds with improved solubility and bioavailability. Excellience operates out of a CGMP compliant, FDA audited, DEA licensed facility in Tampa, Florida. For more information, please visit the website at www.excellience.com. I'd now like to welcome our speaker for today's seminar, Dr. Paul Skultati. Dr. Skultati is Director, Pharmaceutical Development Services at Excellience. He has a unique background in pharmaceutical development, combining extensive experience in contract development and pharmaceutical companies. At Excellience, his role is to provide leadership to the Pharmaceutical Development Services Group, which includes pre-formulation, analytical chemistry, and formulation development. Before joining Excellience, he held such positions as Vice President of Pharmaceutics at Quintiles, Director of Solids Formulation Development for Hesht Marion Russell and various management positions within Marion Merrill Dow and Marion Labs, which were predecessors to HMR. Dr. Skultati has a successful track record of developing new chemical entities from pre-IND to commercialization. He has nine U.S. formulation and composition patents and has written a number of publications and made numerous scientific presentations. He has been a member of AAPS since its inception. And now, without further ado, I'd like to hand the microphone over to Paul Skultati. Paul, you may begin when ready. Thank you, Donna. I would like to wish everybody a good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're at. And thank you for joining us for today. Our uh, discussion today is going to be on scale-up considerations um, going from formulation development all the way through to commercialization. We're not going to have time today to really talk about the tr transfer aspect of dealing with this as well, but if you do a good job of what we talk about today during the scale-up process, the transfer process going from, let's say, the pilot plant into the commercial facility will be a very smooth and easy process. So today we're going to talk about what is really your formulation development objective, and we'll go through uh, several phases from phase one to commercialization. We'll talk very briefly about some improvement approaches that we can utilize during the development process and even during commercialization. We're going to talk about understanding powders because that's very critical. That's the, if we can build a solid base when we're working with our powders from the very beginning, that again is going to make for a much smoother process when we get to large scale and when we get to uh, commercialization. We'll talk about what do we need to consider during the scale up and then we'll do a very brief uh, design of experiments film coding study, a case study that we've utilized. 
For our product development objective, clearly we want to develop a formulation and a process that will consistently deliver a dosage form with the desired quality attributes. And we want to create a robust formulation. And a robust formulation is a formulation that is able to accommodate the typical variability that's going to be seen in our API, um, the excipients we use, and the manufacturing process. And we want this variability to be handled so that it doesn't affect the stability or the performance of the product. We obviously want to be able to reproducibly manufacture the same thing time and time again. And our commercialization objective is we want the manufacturing process to be very well understood. We want our, our commercial manufacturer people to be able to have confidence that they're going to be able to manufacture this material over and over again, and that a minor change in the API or a minor change in any of the excipients would not cause them any over uh, concern. We, so we basically want the variability be managed by the process uh, so we can handle a variety of changes in the raw materials. And the last thing we want to consider at the commercialization stage is we want to be able to facilitate continuous improvement. We want to be able to trend our data and show that everything is, is within specification and that we're not trending either one direction or another. So how do we want to be able to accomplish this? And we want to do it by being able to define rather our design space. And what do we mean by design space? And we'll talk about that in a little minute. But we basically want to propose our specifications for this product based on that evaluated space so that we know if we stay within this design space that time and time again we're going to be able to produce the same product. This will give us a lot more flexibility in proposing changes <clears throat> excuse me, with the FDA. If we have to adjust something or we want to change something a little bit because of changes in raw materials or changes in our equipment, as long as we stay within that design space that we studied, we shouldn't have to seek prior approval. We can do a change by effect submission to the FDA. And we want this design space again, to account for the variability that we might see in either the raw materials, the excipients, the API, and the process. And we want to periodically review this because as, as we manufacture this over and over again, our knowledge base is going to grow and we want to trend the data. And if there's any failures that we see, um, we, we want to take that into account. Um, unfortunately, if something goes well, we don't really learn a lot from that necessarily. But if something fails, we learn a lot from that. So unfortunately, in this case, from failure could come better results. And if you look at this picture, we basically want to evaluate a much wider space than what we're actually going to be operating in. So we call that our knowledge space, something that we've studied, but we don't necessarily want to routinely manufacture in there. <clears throat> then we would have a tighter area from there that what we call the design space, that we know anything in that shaded area is going to provide the same product time and time again. And within that, which is normally where we're going to operate is, we will come into a tighter area as well. Now one, to make this as best as possible, if we look at the knowledge space, we want it to be on the edge of failure. We want to know that if we happen to go outside of that area that something might fail and we will know why that might fail. That will help us in, in keeping everything well within our design space. There are three improvement approaches that we can utilize. One is what's called innovation and we'll talk about this a little bit more. But this is a QBD focused or quality by design focused approach, meaning you want to build the quality in. You want to start from the very beginning when we first start with our excipient compatibility study and build the quality into the product all the way through to commercialization. 
and we want to evaluate and we want to optimize the process and formulation. And we want to do this by a statistical process. The second improvement approach is called continuous improvement. And this is really, we're manufacturing something over and over again and we provide the product within specification each time we manufacture it. So we kind of do a little retrospective look at all the batches we've made. We collect the data and we evaluate the data and we try to trend that data and if need be we might adjust that data. And last, which is not by any means the most preferred approach, would be a corrective action approach, where we look at the product deviations, we look at product characteristics that might not be as good as we want it to be, and then we try to do a risk assessment, <coughs> excuse me, doing this approach, and a short-term fix, which would be reworking the material. Let's say we've manufactured um, a roller compaction and, and we end up with a lot of fines in that material on this particular lot. Well, we do a rework approach to re, uh, send the fines back through the roller compactor. But again, this is not the preferred approach. We're not really try building quality in at this point. We're trying to look for a corrective action for a problem that we're seeing. Now, going back to the innovative approach, which again is our preferred approach, we really want to understand the process from beginning to end. From the weighing out of materials, the blending materials, all the way through to the finished product. And that will start with characterizing very well not only the API, but characterizing the excipients. Excipients can come in a wide variety of particle size, of different grades, so we want to make sure that we understand what is the effect of each excipient going to be on our material. And we want to do this evaluation based on very statistically valid um, experiments. It is very helpful if we have a statistician available that can help us, one, design the study so that we can get the most data out of the least number of runs. <clears throat> but also help us interpret the results when we get to the end. We want to make sure that we can define acceptable operating ranges from the simplest thing to how long do we blend a <coughs> material to how hard can we compress it, what is the hardness acceptable range to the coating bed temperature if we're doing coating and so forth. And last but not least, we want to show that everything that we learned during this scale-up process, we can demonstrate at full scale. And we may need to do some challenge at full scale to show that the statistical design that we built up is valid at that level.